What are our rights and where do they come from? Hello everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we're going to talk about rights. Specifically, where they come from and what authorities government, government has over people with rights. Now, you have probably heard it said that rights come from God. Uh, this is a common thing in kind of liberty circles when we start talking about rights. And this is absolutely true. So, let's talk about that and what that means. So, at the top, you have God. Here I am going to use Yahweh, who is the God of the Bible, of course, because that's the real God. Yahweh, being the creator of all things, has authority over all things, because obviously he is God in the quite literal sense. He has made all things. He holds all things together by the will of his power. He is God. God, in his sovereign authority, created man in his own image. That is one of the founding principles of what we believe about man. And by here, I mean mankind in general, right? God has created man in his image. Uh, that means a lot of different things. But one of the things it means is that people, therefore, have inherent dignity and value. When I went to college, I majored in philosophy. And one of the reasons I majored in philosophy, one of the things I was super interested in was ethics. You know, why is murder wrong? You know murder's wrong and I know murder's wrong, but really, why is murder wrong? Well, it turns out that the answer is because God made man in his image. Murder is ultimately wrong because you are disgracing God. That is why murder is wrong. You are defaming his image on the earth. That's ultimately why murder is wrong. Now, you might say, hey, listen, Dylan, you're, you're devaluing people. You only care about God. You don't care about people. That is 100% false. In fact, I am imbuing human beings with more value, more dignity, and more purpose inherent in their nature than if they were not made in the image of God. So, because all men of all races across all history are made in God's image, because mankind is imbued with inherent dignity and value being created by God, therefore, man has rights. Now, let's talk about that. Rights only work on a man-to-man -man concept, okay? Meaning between one human being and between another human being, you have rights that flow both ways. I have inherent value and worth and dignity and rights because I am a human being created in God's image. And you have in inherent value, rights, and dignity because you are a human being created in God's image. Now, what exactly these rights are, there's, of course, we can debate some, right? And there's a difference between legal rights, like the right to a speedy trial, and inherent rights, like the right to self-protection, right? Some rights are universal across all time in human history, period, uh, like the right to self-protection. Uh, legal rights, like the right to a speedy trial, right? We've enshrined that as a legal right within the United States Constitution and, and within our culture. And that's, of course, different because while you have the inherent human value right to self-protection, you may or may not have the inherent human self-value right to a speedy trial. And we can debate about that and talk about that, but just understand that there is some difference. And again, there's lots of debate and discussion about it, but there is some kind of difference there. Now, one important thing to point out, because I think this is where honestly a lot of pastors and people who uh, believe in Christianity get off the bandwagon, is they try to say, well, look, human beings don't have rights because you don't have rights between you and God right? That does not exist. Like God is God. Of course you don't have rights. God can do whatever he wants. To which I would answer, yes, obviously, of course, he's God. However, that does not mean that I don't have rights between me and another person, right? Rights are a thing that works on this plane of existence right here. That's where rights exist. Rights, of course, do not exist between you and God because, again, quite literally, he is God. He has created all things. He has created time and space and the atoms which hold our beings together. So, of course, he owns all things and we don't have rights before him, obviously. So, the other important piece to understanding rights, of course, is government. 
<clears throat> government, of course, is just a group of people. It's made up of men. It's not just this other entity, right? It's not like God created man and then God created government. God created men and men form governments. God has also established government by his sovereign will, right? If you want to go further into your Bible reading, you can look at Romans 13, 4 and 1 Peter 2, 13. However, God has established government with purpose, which is to punish evil and reward good. So the question, of course, is do those rights which exist between man as established by God still exist between man and government? And the answer, of course, is yes, because government is only made up of men. And therefore, we still have rights before government. This might seem fairly basic. However, some people don't seem to grasp this concept. One of the principles you need to understand is that all authority is derived authority, which means that nothing, no one inherently has authority in and of themselves. Because as we, again, in our founding documents, all men are created equal, a God has made all man. There is no man that was created greater than another man with more inherent authority. All authority, therefore, is derived authority from God. God establishes authority in certain institutions, like government and like parents. Those are positions of authority that are derived authority from God. And there are times when God shares some pieces of his authority with things like government. That does not mean, however, that any human institution of any kind has ultimate authority. For example, if you abuse your children, we will take your children away because you have abused your authority. If you're an abusive husband to your wife and kids, again, they, we are going to remove them from under your authority because you are abusive and you have betrayed that authority. And it's the same thing with governments. When governments have abused their ends, it is the right and duty of the people, as the Declaration of Independence says, to throw off those governments and establish new institutions which respect their rights. In case you haven't figured this out, the framers of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States were steeped in a biblical worldview. I'm not saying they were all Christians, but what I'm saying is they assumed this about the world. And they had an understanding that, yes, there was God. They might not exactly know who he is or whatever, but they assumed all of this about the way the world inherently functions. Otherwise, they could have never landed at this idea of rights. If I haven't made a substantial amount of you mad yet, uh, allow me to try again. Uh, this only works with a biblical worldview. The entire idea of rights only functions when you have a biblical worldview, when you assume all of these things about the world. Because if you don't, if God is out of the picture in this scenario, and, and you don't believe in God, or you don't want him in the picture, or you want to have rights without him, or whatever, then something else has to fill the power vacuum. Something else has to fill the, the place of absolute authority. And there are two common answers to that. One is self. I'm the ultimate authority over my life, period. There, no one else has any kind of authority over me at all, period. And that's where we can kind of go down the anarchism train, which we're not going to get into, but it's garbage. The second one, and the one that I think is a much more common problem in the current culture we live in, is we take government and we put that in the ultimate place of authority. And once government gets put in that ultimate place of authority, like we talked about earlier, your rights no longer transfer between you and the government. And you can see this working out, right? You've seen this work out in the past couple of years with COVID restrictions across various nations. You've seen it work out where rights no longer flow between you and the government because they're in a place of ultimate authority over you. Their authority is no longer derived, but rather it is ultimate and supreme, and you have whatever they choose to give you. The government has, in effect, become God. And so I think this is probably the great danger of our time when we talk about rights is this is what's happening on a philosophical level. But people may not really understand that or get that or care. 
But this, this is what's happening. And we've removed God and we've replaced him with government. And we've said this is now our ultimate authority. And that's why you've seen the rise of things like censorship and misinformation and people saying, how dare you question the science and things like this. Because all of that has been a part of the government and the government's message. And it's become their doctrine. And how dare you question the ultimate authority, which is now government. This is why it's very important to have a biblical worldview and a understanding that all authority and rights come from God. God made man, government did not. And government is only made up of men whose job is to, again, punish evil, reward good, and I would argue, preserve your rights. I hope this is helpful and I hope this helps you understand what's happening and why people will get so upset when you question the science or the narrative or you spread your misinformation, which of course, misinformation has just become synonymous with disagreeing with the government. Because again, we've replaced God with government and given government ultimate authority over our lives. Do brave deeds and endure.